Salut. G'day. <laughs> G'day, mate. G'day, mate. That's right. Today we're going to make a video a little bit different. Firstly, we're going to get a little bit more personal with you guys. Aujourd'hui, c'est une vidéo un petit peu particulière, un petit peu plus personnelle. Secondly, and I apologize in advance, I'm going to try and edit this video. So please excuse the terrible poor quality and the maybe I'll have Steffi teaching me, but the the normal videos will uh, maintain be maintained only by Steffi and they'll be out every Friday as per usual. Le montage de cette vidéo est effectué par Lee. <laughs> Je m'en occupe pas et on va voir avec uh, on va voir ce qu'il va pouvoir faire, mais les vidéos du vendredi restent inchangées et ça c'est moi qui m'en occupe. The reason this has come about is we just feel that we have a lot of material to to make extra videos, but Steph is already overloaded. It's uh, it's a lot of effort to to make every Friday's video as it is. One of the first questions we always get asked is how a little Frenchie and an Aussie bloke ended up together and travelling the world in a Land Rover Defender. Well, here it is. We're going to tell you guys how we met and how all of this came about. As you maybe already know, my name is Lee. I'm from a small town called Wandi in Western Australia. I grew up on a small farm where my love for the outdoors and the Aussie bush began. So like all kids that grow up in the bush, we made our own fun. Camping on our property, building tree houses, getting up close and personal with Australian wildlife, lighting fires, driving machinery in 4x4s. Steph, on the other hand, came from a very different childhood and upbringing. Steph grew up in a small suburb on the outskirts of Paris called La Frette sur Seine. Although growing up in the suburbs, Steph was also exposed to nature and the outdoors from a very young age, with regular camping trips together with her family and their old caravan. In the winter, the family would make an annual trip to the French Alps to ski. The family also enjoyed regular weekend trips to the family home in Etretat, Normandy. Following in my father's footsteps, after finishing high school, I started a plumbing apprenticeship. Four years later, I was a tradesman. Une fois que Lille a terminé, je pense que c'est le lycée, Il a fait une formation de plombier, comme son père. Et après quatre ans, il était euh, qualifié pompier. Euh, pompier. Plombier. <laughs> Maybe pompier. I wanted to. I wanted to be a pompier when I was a kid, but no, I didn't. Pompier is cool. My mother, also a very keen traveler, encouraged myself and my brother to travel from a very young age. At 18 years old, I went on my first solo adventure to New Zealand for four weeks. At 18 ans, il est parti en Nouvelle-Zélande pour son premier voyage euh, en sac à dos, et là, il a été piqué par le virus du voyage. Steph graduated high school at the age of 18 and began working at a department store in the centre of Paris. She then went on to complete a diploma in cosmetics and beauty therapy. Whilst completing her diploma, Steph was also working as a teacher at the centre. At the age of 26, after recently discovering rock climbing, I booked a one-week training course in Krabi, Thailand. Needing a climbing partner, I convinced a not-so-keen work colleague Nick to accompany me to Thailand with the promise that after the week's climbing course, we would continue to travel Thailand in search of the party scene. Unknown to me, at that same time, a little Frenchie all the way across on the other side of the world was planning her first big overseas trip to Thailand. Alors, pendant que Lee était en train de préparer son voyage d'escalade, eh bien moi de mon côté, je préparais aussi mon voyage en Thaïlande avec mon amie Lucy. At 23 years old, Steph and her good mate Lucy packed their excessively large suitcases and boarded a plane to Bangkok. On the small island of Koh Phangan, we would cross paths and our lives changed forever. Sitting in a hotel restaurant alone and waiting on Nick to arrive, I caught sight of a very cute young lady sitting across the room. So after my mate Nick arrived and obviously a couple of beers later and I worked up the courage, we went across, well I went across, my mate Nick was too scared. <laughs> Sorry Nick if you watch the videos. <laughs> I went across and um, spoke to the two lovely ladies, asking them if myself and Nick could join them. I was instantly halted in my tracks when in broken English they replied to me, 
we don't speak English. Um, I told them, that's all right, I'm Australian and I don't speak English either. We spent the next week together and eventually, after an emotional farewell, promised to keep in touch and see each other again. Fortunately, my job at that time had me working a four weeks on, four weeks off rotation. I asked Steph if she would like me to visit a few months later. Lucky for me, she said yes. I flew to Paris and we spent three weeks traveling France and decided that we needed to give this relationship a chance. At that time, Steph was working in a cashmere store on the Champs-Élysées. She decided to work another three months, saving money, then quit her job and travel to Australia on the famous 12-month working holiday visa. Four years later, not far from where we met, 150 meters up on the side of a mountain in Thailand, I asked Steph to marry me. I got lucky a second time when she said yes. 12 months later, we got married on the beach in the shadow of the mountain we were engaged. The rest is history. Over the last 11 years, we have traveled to over 50 countries together, pursuing our passion of rock climbing and adventure. Over 30 of these countries have been overland in our own vehicle. We don't know exactly what the future has in store for us, but we do know that we will continue to live this lifestyle of traveling the world overland for as long as we are possibly able. To wrap this up, we just want to say a huge thank you to all of our amazing patrons because honestly, without you guys, none of this would be possible. So thank you, merci beaucoup. Et on voulait remercier encore une fois tous nos patrons parce que sans vous, rien de tout ça serait possible. Merci. Merci, thank you and don't worry. I'll only be editing sometimes if I'm allowed. <laughs> and they'll only be uh, midweek videos. Friday's mid videos. Midweek. Plombier? Plombier. Plombier? J'ai un plombier. Uh, J'ai un plombier. Non. <laughs> non pompier. Okay. Pompier is uh, for English, fire. fireman in yeah. English. Oh, yeah, we've both got our crocs on. Can you lift it more? I'm not that flexible. All right, let's get inside. It's freezing bye. out here. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Thank you. Merci.